Welcome back to Bootstrap Workbench. Today I wanted to talk about the uh, RTL SDR.com 88 to 108 MHz band stop broadcast FM reject filter. Uh, this is a device that I purchased off of Amazon. Uh, you can also purchase it through the RTL SDR.com store, uh, I believe. So this little device is useful because <clears throat> on RTL SDR receivers they are prone to front end overload. Uh, they're pretty much a uh, a super wideband receiver, and as such, they are uh, subject to uh, being overloaded with uh, signal levels that are uh, far outside of the uh, band or frequency of interest, and uh, that causes you to lose the ability to receive weak signals uh, just because the overhead of the receiver is being consumed uh, by the amount of uh, signal strength that's coming in. Uh, in a lot of cases, this is because of uh, nearby transmitters, uh, such as high-power FM stations, uh, high-power paging transmitters, although that's not as common as it used to be, uh, high-power AM stations. There are various other uh, transmitters out there that cause issues, uh, like, for instance, NOAA transmitters, if you have one nearby. Most people have uh, an FM radio station nearby. In my case, I have two. Uh, I have a country and western uh, station that's uh, probably about a half mile from here and I also have a, a top 40 station uh, 100,000 watts that is uh, very close within about seven blocks and it, it causes issues and so I purchased this filter and uh, I wanted to be able to uh, to analyze it uh, to find out uh, if it is as advertised uh, I know it performs well because I've had it in line but I like to have some empirical evidence. So, what I have is uh, an RTL SDR.com uh, SDR receiver stick, and I have a new ELEC uh, ham it up uh, with the noise source. I added that on. Um, when you buy that uh, option, it comes as a kit of parts that you solder on uh, to the ham it up up converter board, and uh, I think it's well worth it. It's a wideband noise source. Uh, so I do not have a, a spectrum analyzer with tracking generator, but with a wideband noise source and an RTL SDR stick, uh, you can perform some measurements if you have the correct software. Uh, in this case, the software that I like to use is called Spectrum, and you can get it at https colon forward slash forward slash github.com forward slash pavel s forward slash spectrum, and that's with a K, S P E K. T R U M. Uh, what you can do is uh, once you get to that site, there's a README, and uh, if you read further down, uh, you'll under Quick Start see where it says "Grab the latest release" and release as a hyperlink. So I'm going to open that in a new tab, and I can see that the latest release is 1.02, and I want to grab that for Windows 64. Now, if you're using an x86 version of Windows, uh, you're going to be out of luck here. You have to have a 64-bit version of Windows to run this software. Back to the README, uh, we can see here that we need to connect and configure our RTL SDR stick. In this case, I've already done that. I've been using it for quite a while. Um, and we'll need to extract the zip file that we're downloading right now and then uh, run the executable that's in there. Now, if you run that executable and all you get is a gray screen, then you're most likely missing the Visual C++ redistributable for Visual Studio 2012. And the author has uh, generously provided a link here to uh, go download that file. So, um, let's see here. I believe we're probably ready. We're going to go ahead and extract this. And it's going to take just a couple of minutes. So we'll go back here. Uh, we need to talk about relative mode. What relative mode does for you is if you're using a noise source, uh, this is basically like zeroing out the meter. So you connect the noise source, you set your desired frequency range, you click relative mode, let it run for at least a few sweeps, and then click set relative. And that'll give you um, your fairly straight line around zero dB. Now, if you have a a noise source that has some noise spikes in it, you're still going to end up seeing those. 
So, once you've zeroed everything out, you can connect the antenna or filter and then tweak the gain uh, so that you can uh, see what's desired. Now, this is useful for looking at uh, filter response, uh, whether it is uh, your typical uh, you know, small filter that's built out of uh, like coils and capacitors, or uh, you can also use this, and, and it's not fantastic at doing it, but you can rough it in. You can use this uh, on uh, resonant cavities like uh, duplexers. Um, it won't get you uh, in as close as you need to be, but it, you can rough it in, and that way, if you can get a little bit of time uh, with a spectrum analyzer, with tracking generator, or some type of uh, communication service monitor that has that functionality built into it, or a vector network analyzer, uh, it won't take you as long to get everything uh, tuned in, and so that's uh, that's very useful. Let's see if we're uh, done yet here. Looks like we're still extracting. Uh, nope, still working at it. Okay, great. And now we can see that we have a Spectrum dash Win64 folder. We'll drill down until we reach our executable. So we'll go ahead and run that. I currently have my noise source connected directly to my RTL SDR. So, per the instructions in the README, I can uh, go ahead and set my range. So what I want to look at here is approximately 75 megahertz. and you do have to enter it the long way here to uh, let's say 130 megahertz we're gonna set our range very good and uh, we're going to click relative mode and we've let it run for at least a few scans so now we can click set relative and as you'll see uh, that line has uh, really become a lot flatter. Uh, we may not exactly be at uh, 0 dB and uh, keep in mind this is dB not dBm so uh, you'll need to make those conversions yourself but just for looking at filter response or uh, roughing in a duplexer uh, this will be good enough. Uh, everything is, uh, is relative so to speak. So I'm going to disconnect my noise source from my RTL SDR and I'm going to put the rtlsdr.com 88 to 108 FM band stop filter in line. Now really this is going to attenuate any signal in that frequency range so it's not just an FM reject filter but uh, that's what they call it just so that you know. And as you can see here you can see the response starting out at around uh, Oh, I would say probably 83 megahertz and continuing through probably about 118 megahertz uh, it drops down quite a bit uh, more reduction towards the high end of the band than the low end of the band and uh, so that quite possibly may do enough to knock out uh, enough offending signal so that you get back uh, some of your sensitivity uh, by reducing the amount of front end overload that you're seeing. And like I said, uh, this arrangement uh, with the noise source, the RTL uh, SDR stick, and the uh, whatever type of filter you're trying to look at uh, is also very handy. Uh, to let you know here, the uh, SDR stick that I'm using, it is the RTL SDR.com uh, DVB uh, DAB FM SDR. RTL 2832U R820T2 uh, TCXO plus bias T plus HF version 3. Uh, the important thing there for most applications is you want to make sure you get an RTL SDR stick that has TCXO. Uh, that way you have enhanced frequency stability. Uh, if not, you're going to have quite a bit of drift and uh, you're not going to be accurate as you need to be, uh, especially for uh, these type of operations. So that's pretty much going to cover it for right now. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. Um, I hope that you found this video informative, and I also hope that you have a great day. Thanks for watching.